Hey, I heard you've been streaming some repo lately. It looked like an alien. Oh, what the? <gasps> I don't know what that is. Well, look, I recreated the model from scratch over on my Twitch channel just so I can make little avatars slash PNG tubers for you. So check out the link in the description and you'll have access to all of those images. I took the time to make multiple colors, but the truth is with the color correction filter, you can probably set the color yourself. And in this video, I want to break down how to get this working, but also the different setups and animations that you can get. We're going to go from the simplest to the most complicated. So get comfortable and click on that subscribe button. All right. So once you click on that link, the first images are going to be kind of different than the others because they are going to be angled. And I did this for a specific reason that you're going to discover later. But basically, if you want the camera to be a little bit top right, you get this one. And what you can do is basically right click, save image as, and you're going to have a PNG image with a transparent background, right? If you want to keep it simple, you want to have a specific color, especially those will have different colored lights. You can pick one. Then you want to go ahead and get the image reaction plugin for OBS Studio. You just go on the right here, click download. You're going to see the Windows file, download, just install it, boom, boom, bap. And then in OBS Studio, this will give you access to a brand new source called image reaction. Let's call this one repo PNG. And those are the options that you can expect. First, it's going to ask you to put an image when there's silence and then an image when there's sound. So the first image is usually an order purple one here. And then I'm going to grab purple two. the second image. And finally, audio source. You want to select what you want it to react to. In my case, it's going to be my mic. So I'll pick mic auxiliary. Then you set up the threshold to, you know, avoid it reacting to like every little noise in your room. And this smoothness kind of eases into it, right? So it's not as jaggedy as right now. Beep, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> and just like that, congratulations, you have yourself a little repo character that reacts to your voice and all of that directly in OBS Studio. Now, if you don't want to use this for yourself, for example, you use a webcam, so you're like, oh, I'm not going to use this avatar thing. If you're playing with friends, you might want to use it for them. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but it's called Discord Reactive Images. Just type that in Google. And now you can send your friend that specific link. They can pick their color and then they will upload two images, send you a link to a browser source. And in real time, they will have their own little PNG tuber that you can place wherever in your OBS scene. Now on that link, you'll see that some images are not like the others. Everything is facing front, but I have some angled ones. So if you would like a different look, let's say the angle looking down, we can replace the first image and that second image. This is basically to give it more of that 3D look. I'm going to lower the smoothness. There we go. But if you want to place this somewhere where it would make sense, hey, maybe you wanted to look at the footage while it's on the left. You can just right click, transform, flip horizontal, and there you have it. All right, let me show you the other angle. Now we have an angle where the camera is a little lower looking up and uh, yeah, I can uh, control R to reset transform. There we go. Once again, place it wherever you want and you have your little talking guy. One thing you will notice is that uh, those don't come in multiple colors. Why is that? Because I wanted to show you that if you want to take things a little further and if you want to use your big brain to use OBS Studio, you can just right click on the source, go to filters, click on plus to add a new filter, click color correction, click OK, and then play it with the hue shift. And now you can have it be whatever color you want. Feel free to play with the gamma. Feel free to play with the contrast. Feel free to play with the brightness. Feel free to play with the saturation as much as you like knowledge. OK, OK, OK. Let's say that you don't like the fact that it's so jumpy. It's just one image to another image. You want something smooth. You want a proper animation of the head going up and down. Why don't we just animate it in OBS Studio? Now, you'll understand why I made most of them looking straight on. You know what? We're not even going to use an image react source here. We're going to use image sources. All right. So we're going to bring two images. So we're going to add an image source. So click on source, find image, hold it whatever you want, browse and just pick one. This looks good, but it's not reacting to sound. It's definitely not moving smoothly right now. So I'm going to right click on it, copy, right click again and paste duplicate. So I have two of those. While the top one is selected, I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard, click on the bottom handle here and drag up. We are cropping one of those. OK, that is alt on your keyboard. I'm going to select the bottom one and I'm going to crop from the top bars. So basically what I did here, I'm going to turn them on and off so you can see is uh, created basically two layers. Now with the top layer, what I can do is potentially just move it around, right? You see that? You see how I, I can manually move it? You see how I like to move it, move it? You like to move it. Now I wonder if there's a plugin for OBS Studio that allows you to move stuff around. Oh, look at that. This is the move plugin by Exaldro. Install it, restart OBS. And this time we're actually going to add a filter directly to our mic. So go to your audio mixer. I'm going to click on the three little dots, go to filters 
already have a couple filters here, as you can see. And we're gonna add a audio move because that's a filter that comes with the move plugin, amongst other things. Before I even select the right scene, I know that I wanted to move on position Y. So I'm gonna set transform to position Y. And then I'm gonna select the right scene. We are on scene three. And we're gonna select repo two because that's the top one. So that's the head. Bim, bam, 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 bam. Now we have an issue. It's actually going down instead of going up. So what do we do? Can we put minus? under factor. So factor is like how much you want it to move. Base value is basically where you want it to start. I'm gonna put a minus right now and beep, bop, 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 bop. it works. Now, maybe I don't like the placement. If I try to manually grab it, that's not gonna work. So we need to do everything via the base value now. So for base value, I'm gonna put something like 50. There we go. All right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> You'll see like this is super jagged, right? It's not necessarily less jagged than the other one, except for the fact that it has multiple positions. So we have something called easing, and that's what we want to bring up to make it a little smoother, okay? Now you can work like a smooth operator. <laughs> so even if you're not going to use this, you just learn how to make things move in different ways, how to make things react to audio. So let's keep it going with the tips. With all this newfound knowledge, you could probably remake this, at least a simple version, from scratch in OBS Studio. So what I'm going to do is add a color source. This is going to be the first quote unquote cylinder of the body. I'm going to call it body one. Looks like the color, place it something like that. Not bad. Now I wonder if there are OBS plugins that really help you manipulate any source really. Well, there's two. There's the OBS shader filter plugin, and there's also the advanced mask plugin by Finite Singularity. This one mostly creates masks, so it doesn't necessarily distort the source. So right now I just want some rounded corners on my rectangle. So I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to use advanced mask, find corner radius, and just put a slight little bevel now it's not appearing perfectly because it doesn't match the size so we have 600 by 500 let me go back and actually set my width and height to that there it is and now we can adjust the corner radius smooth let's copy this and then duplicate it again i'm actually going to slightly change the color on this one just so we can see what we're doing and i'm going to bring it behind i'm going to resize it a little bit and bring it up okay now let's move faster i'm going to right click duplicate again nice i'm going to press f2 to rename it that's going to be our head and now we just need to resize it and make it fit go back to your filters and under corner radius instead of having it be uniform we can set it to custom meaning that we can set each corner to the radii that we want so top left, for example, I could be like, hey, why don't you be a little like that? Hey, top right, why don't you be a little, or, or I can just type the value of the first one, 248. Does that look good? It kind of look, it kind of does. See how fast we move in? All right, let's add a new color source. Call it repo eyes. Make sure it's white, white. Set a square type of size. I'll go 500 by 500. And then we're going to add the advanced mask filter to that. Except now this time, we're just going to set the shape here because we have that option. We're going to set it to circle. We have radius. Let's bring that down. And bop, we have our eyeball. All right, right click, copy, right click, uh, paste, duplicate. We are going for a more cartoonish effect here, of course. Right click, paste, duplicate again. Except this time you want to select the color. You want it to be black. Bring that down. Place it where you want. Right click, copy, right click, duplicate. And rename everything so you don't lose anything. <laughs> Finally, the arm. And you want to pay attention for this one. Let's set that up. I'm going to go 200 by 800. We're going to add a filter. Advanced mask again. Make sure you match the width. Give it that corner radius. And I want to taper the bottom part. There's multiple ways to do this. I could use a 3D effect to basically give it perspective to fake that. Or I can use the shader filter plugin. So I'm going to go user define shader. Click OK. Load shader text from file. Click browse. And then find something called corner pin make sure it's corner dash pin not corner underscore pin because you get those little sliders so now i basically want the sliders for bottom left x because that's the x-axis the bottom left x i can bring that in minus 80 that looks good and then bottom right x here you can just type 80 or if you want more just like do more now there's one extra step that we need before we animate it set the what i call the anchor point where is it gonna take the animation to rotate because we want it to go like this, right? I want it to go like this. So right now, by default in OBS Studio, the anchor point is always set to top left. So we're gonna press Control E and you'll see positional alignment, top left. We want our anchor point to be top middle. So we'll find top center, 
from now on, when we rotate, it's going to be from that specific point. We're also going to drag the arm and bring it all the way behind the body. And um, I can rotate it a little bit. Now we're going to, of course, right click it, copy it, right click, duplicate, bring it all the way down. So now whatever rotation we have here, we just need to rotate it uh, the other way. So I can click on the first one, control E, and just copy the rotation here. Click on the second one, control E, put a minus. There you go. And bring it. All righty. Now we want the eyes, the eyeballs, and the head to be in one specific group because we need it to move together, right? I can just select all of that by holding shift, right click, group selected items and call this head group. And then go to my mic and we're going to do the audio filter thing again. I don't think I need to show you like the, it's already there. All right, we're just going to have to change the, <laughs> the specific source. We're going to pick head group and here we have it. Just play with the base value until you find what your initial position needs to be. Ba ba ba. Ba 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 ba. Cool. Let's make the hands move. Add another audio move filter here. And we know that we're going to transform what? The rotation. Good. You're paying attention. That's cool. Now we just need to select our arm. For me, they're called repo arm and repo arm two. So I'm going to go scene, scene three, and repo arm. Ba 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 ba. 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 <laughs> this is wild. Base value was 24, I believe. Yes. And in fact, there is, of course, you know, the amplitude, like how much you want it to move. So let's uh, bring that down by a lot. And now all we have to do for the other one is basically duplicate this one. Thankfully, there's right click duplicate, select the right one. And for the factor, you just want to put minus. And of course, for the base value, also minus. And there we have it. Bum, 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 ba, bum, 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 bum. And we just made a PNG tuber in OBS Studio without using any external software. Wait, what's that? You want to push it further? Why would you? Okay, let's uh, add some movement to the eyes. So on the group, the head group that is, I'm going to right click and go to filters. And I'm going to set two move source filters just to register that initial position for the eyes. So let's go, let's add a one move source. We can call it init left one. And here we can select the source. Thankfully I named them. So we're going to select that left eye. I'm going to scroll down and click get transform. Then I can duplicate this, in it right, select the right eye, get transform. For custom duration, I think I want everything to take like a second. So I'm going to set the custom duration to 1000 milliseconds for each. Now we can set position number one, let's say. I'm going to duplicate the filter for the left eye. I'm going to call this one look left left. Should probably turn off the audio because <laughs> I want to, I need to manually click it. Okay, go back to that uh, filter for the... Now you want to make sure that you have the right filter selected then you want to move that eyeball we want it to look left a little bit maybe up roll down and click get transform nice so basically uh in it left i can go to my initial position and i can also go left all right so let's duplicate this and we can move a little faster make sure you select the right eye for that one boom and move it where you want it to move scroll down get transform duplicate call it look right select the eye you want scroll down get transform duplicate select the right eye scroll down get transform and now let's create a loop. So I'm going to click on the first initial position, scroll down, tell it that so simultaneously, I want it to also initiate the right eye. So when I trigger the first one, second one also moves in place. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for all three. So basically now I just need one trigger to move the eyeball in position. Since we have one trigger, we only need that one trigger and tell it that the next move should be whatever the next move is. So after the initial position, look left, okay. After you're done looking left, scroll down, next move, look right, okay. What happens after you look right, next move, initial position. Very easy. Maybe I want to have a delay in between the positions. So let's do that. And that specific option is called end delay. It's right there. Maybe wait two seconds in between each. So we can put 2000 milliseconds and we'll just put that on the main triggers for each. And hopefully the simultaneous move still works. <laughs> All we have to do is click on one and then see what happens. All right, one, two, and then one, two. There we go. And just like that, we have not only some animation going on straight in OBS Studio, of course, but we also have reactive animation that we can just uh, activate with the arms also. Isn't that cool? <laughs> just to show that it's possible to do things directly in OBS Studio without needing, you know, any fancy software, without trying to figure out, oh, how do I do this? How do I do that? Uh, it's already there, pal. <laughs> For most OBS users, those are plugins you heard about 
you've seen me use before. So get to it. And of course, this is completely customizable and you have the data. So if you use software like a streamer bot, you could have it so that chat can change the color of this thing or chat could actually trigger specific animations. If you know, maybe if the type left, it looks left or right. Or maybe if you get bits, uh, you can probably have media instead of the eyes. You can have it so that it turns off the eyes and then turns on like little hearts or the little bit logo or like a, a star for subscribers whatever you want really you just need to be creative with it and of course you know take the time to actually make it i might do more animations i might figure out other ways like for me i can do whatever but uh if i want to make it available for you guys that's where it gets complicated so i'll probably be working on this a little longer maybe i'll make like the tiny version of the of the character with the little legs now that i have the 3d model i can you know make any animation and use it as an alert and use it as you know media whatever and also if you'd like to contribute or just see stuff like this in the future um follow me on twitch turn on notifications that's it bye bye